Welcome back to completely tearing apart our lithium batteries and retrofitting it all from scratch. In this video, we implement diversion heating using this 600 watt water heater element in this 10 liter water heater, allowing us to use surplus solar power through the diversion built into the DSSR20s to have always on demand hot water. In part one of this series, we replaced our SBMS 100 with the SBMS 0. Now let's implement diversion heating. Diversion heating allows you to divert excess solar power to an auxiliary load. Typically heat, most commonly hot water, uh, but you could also do electric in-floor heat or uh, hot water heating in your floor, or even heat your lithium batteries if you store them in a place that they might see freezing temperatures. In previous videos, you may have seen, I already modified this little 10 liter water heater and installed a silicone heater mat that I had kicking around, and I used that as a thermal battery for surplus solar. Unfortunately, that heater mat was only 200 watts, but it's the best I could do during a pandemic lockdown in Mexico. I did try and get a big 600 watt heater element like this, a 12 volt, but all the big wind and solar outfits in the US wouldn't ship to me south of the border. But China to the rescue, I ordered this unit from AliExpress, it was about $20, and uh, they were more than happy to ship it to us in Guatemala, where we were at that time. So we've got the water heater, we've got the DSSRs with diversions, let's get into it. Now, as you know, we're traveling from the north of Canada to the southern tip of Argentina, and so we need to bring along all sorts of little doodads, odds and ends, to fix anything that we might need to repair along the way. So I'm completing this installation with my assorted lengths of wire. Now, fortunately, I found this piece of welding cable. It's about two meters long and looks like two gauge cable. That's just barely long enough to reach from our batteries under the floor to over under the sink where the water heater is. Welding cable is going to be perfect because the rubber jacket uh, is rated for very high temperatures. It's not just because the wire itself is going to get hot. This two gauge wiring uh, should easily handle the 60 amps that the water heater is going to pull. But you need to remember that we're connecting this to these terminals on the end of the heater. And these terminals are an extension of the heater element itself. So they're going to get hot. So even if the wire wasn't heating due to its own resistance, uh, if you were to use a PVC or vinyl jacketed cable and connect that, the heat from the heater element is going to get transmitted up through the terminals into the copper and start melting a poor quality insulator. So that's why it's important to use a quality wire in an application like this. Next I'll direct your attention to these terminals on the end of the heater element. You can see there's four terminals there and then these two little dainty brass bus bars. And the reason there's four terminals is there's actually two separate heater elements here. Two 300 watt heater elements. And the bus bars wire them in parallel so that you get 600 watts total. I bought this one because that gives me the flexibility to wire these in parallel and get 600 watts. Use only one of them and run it at 300 watts or connect them in series uh, and get 150 watts. It also gives me some redundancy because if one of the elements burns out, uh, the other one's still working at half the power. The other important thing I wanted to point out really quick is these nuts uh, that tighten down against the ceramic insulator here. You don't want to over tighten these because you'll probably crack the ceramic. So I'm going to go ahead and use some Loctite permanent and put those down finger tight snug so that when I put the next nut on top of there it won't break the ceramic. So enough jibber jabber, let's get to work. When I released the original water heater video I got some criticism that I wouldn't be able to drain the water tank because this drain port is buried down in this panel. So I've dug through my parts bin and found two two gauge terminals that will work well and so we need to solder them to the wire. We have to solder it because I left my big crimper back home in Canada. 
so I flattened a little bit extra on this lug as you can see. I've done that so that once the wires are soldered in I'll come back in and solder this brass bus bar in place just so I have a little extra meat around that hole and then I have a guide for match drilling. Alright, so that's what I got so far. So there's the welding cables terminated onto the water heater element. That's about how that's going to look. Next we'll open up the old water heater and remove the original 120 volt heater element and the power cord. This is going to come in handy in our next video. ground. Remember when we had ground, sweetheart? Yeah. Now we can thread in the new 12 volt element. So when I originally made this water heater conversion and converted it to 12 volts, uh, the common gut reaction of some people was that I could have just used the original 127 volt heater element and put 12 volts into it. It is, after all, just a big resistive load. But it doesn't quite work that way. You need to remember that power is squared. At the rated 127 volts, this 9.8 ohm resistor pulls 13 amps, about 1700 watts. But if you were to put 12 volts through the uh, 9.8 ohm heating element. That's about 1.2 amps or 15 watts. That's about as much heat as you get out of a good hug from grandma. <laughs> so while those people weren't technically wrong, it would work. 15 watts would just take a really long time. That's why we need to convert to the 12 volt uh, heater element. All right, now we can install these big 12 volt cables. Tighten those up temporarily. Now you can see why I trimmed away some of the edge of those terminals with the flap disc just to give clearance between the two. So I still want to make sure that this cover doesn't touch these terminals and uh, you want to of course make sure that you get your good insulation back in there because like I've mentioned several times these connections are going to get really hot and so you want to keep that heat in. All right, so that's the heater installed. Now you wouldn't want to just pour the coals to her at this point because it would heat up in about an hour and then start boiling and producing steam. And we're not trying to build a pressure vessel here. I'm sure I don't need to remind you what happens if you overpressure a water heater. So we need something to control the temperature and cut the power when it's up to temp some kind of digital thermostat, on or off, ones and zeros. Great idea, camera hottie, but there's no way this thermostat is going to switch a 60 amp load, at least not very often. So what we're going to do is use the signal wire that triggers the diversion and run that in series through this thermostat. That way, when it is up to temperature, it will cut the signal to the DSSR-20s, and that, in turn, will cut the power to the heating element. So, let's get this thing installed in the truck. Okay, today is tomorrow. I've got the water heater plumbed back in here. It's full of water. And I've also run the wires 
uh, down through the floor and then underneath the vehicle and this ground is just attached right here to this aluminum chassis ground. So now we can connect these. So there I've got the big power wires connected and two wires to the thermostat. So this will run over to the deck 16. I'll show you that in just a moment. And this is sitting here kind of temporary, but I've done it this way just so that you guys can see it. And so we can do some testing because once this is up and running, I want to get in here with a temperature uh, gun and make sure everything is cool where it should be, namely in these cables, and hot where we want it. And now over here by the batteries and the DSSR 20s, I've got this welding cable coming up through the floor and somehow it has been forked into four 8 gauge cables. So I've got those all wire tied, everything's nice and firm in there. So I'll direct your attention now to this little yellow wire. That was connected to RC heat, and the way that worked is when the SBMS0 detected that the batteries were fully charged, it turns off the RC bat uh, voltage here, which goes to blue, which charges the batteries and diverts the heat, uh, diverts the power to heat by energizing the little yellow wire, and that in turn causes the DSSR20s to divert the power from the solar input to the heat output. So instead, we're going to intercept this yellow wire and send that signal down the black wire over to the thermostat. And then if the thermostat is too cool and not yet up to temperature, it will come back down the red wire and then into the heat signal input on the DSSR20s. So basically we're just interrupting the original heat wire so how I'm going to do this is just cap this original yellow wire. So as you can see, I've capped the original uh, yellow wire and got a uh, new one there, the black one with a little yellow marker on there connected to RC heat. The black will run over to the thermostat. If the thermostat is closed, meaning it's calling for heat, it will send the power back down the red wire with the yellow cap on that. And so now, to make things simple, I'm just going to plug that into this terminal here on the DSSR20. So that's that all done. I'll just put this protective cover back on here. And uh, I'll wire tie a little bit more of this in place and then let's get to testing. So, as you can see on our beautiful Grafana display, video on that coming up soon, uh, you can see we're at 99% state of charge, pulling in about 1000 watts, although it is a sun and cloud sort of day, so you can see here we're fluctuating between 600 and 1000 watts. And, uh, you know, it has been a little rainy weather lately, as you can see in this 14 day uh, historical graph. Uh, our solar production daily has been going down a little bit, but we're near, oh, there we go. We just tripped 100%. So that means if we pan down to our uh, DSSR 20s, they should all be tripped over to a green LED and we should be making heat. Put the current clamp on there. You can see we're pulling in 75 amps. We just got some good sun. Maybe you can hear it too, it's sounding like a tea kettle just getting up to speed. Now, as I've mentioned, it is sun and cloud a little bit today, so there it's dropping pretty quick. We're down to 35 amps. But if I get out the temperature gun here, we're already up at 45 Celsius, 48. Here it is again. Full sun, 75 amps, and she sounds angry. And if we check the sensors, you can see the water temperature is coming up there too. So as this is coming up to temperature, especially for the first time, 
I'm being diligent about checking the temperatures of everything. The ends of these terminals are hot as I told you they would be at about 60 degrees Celsius which will certainly burn you and the cables here because they're copper the wire is uh, transmitting the heat down the down the wire so they're at about 50 degrees here and they cool as it goes down again I've mentioned this earlier in the video but this is not heating because of resistance in the wire because if I reach over here behind me as you can see all the wires over here are all 29 degrees which is ambient so it's not the wires heating up it's just the heat from the heater element traveling down the copper conductors I should mention this thermostat has a adjustable setting here so when we got it originally it was around 50 degrees Celsius uh, so to, s to uh, increase the temperature all I needed to do was turn this dial a little bit and it's sitting around 60 or 62 right now so while we're waiting for this I'll just point out this uh, red button up here there's actually two parts to this thermostat this lower two-thirds is actually the temperature control thermostat section and this upper third is a over temperature kill switch so if the temperature of the water or the water heater ever gets too high it'll th throw this breaker it'll throw it and disconnect and it won't operate anymore you need to come in here and press this red button and I have tripped it a few times uh, and so I've modified our cover with an over temperature reset access hole so I can just jab a screwdriver in there rather than remove this all and take it out. The other thing is I made some access holes here at the bottom to fit around these large welding cables. Okay and it just clicked off and as you can see it has taken about see 1056 to 1130 little better than half an hour to reach set point. Now that's going to fluctuate obviously with the situation in the sun and clouds but that's pretty good. So that's the test completed. Everything seems to work very well. None of the wires got hotter than expected. Uh, the hot water heater got up to temp nice and quickly even though it's a very kind of sun and cloud and gloomy day. Uh, it heated up quickly. As you can see our solar production was fluctuating throughout the day and then it has dropped right off there uh, as it was heating the hot water heater and now that it's back up to temp uh, and the battery has come down a little bit the uh, solar is on its way back up. If you're interested in how I've done all this graphing and uh, have it displayed on this monitor inside our rig uh, where we show our state of charge, all of our temperature sensors throughout the vehicle, our solar production throughout the day, uh, cell balancing data, solar production averages, and uh, water consumption, air pressures, all this sort of thing. Uh, be sure to subscribe and ring that bell. We're going to be making a video, maybe the next one or the one after that, showing how we install InfluxDB and Grafana on a Raspberry Pi and then uh, show it on a beautiful display like this so ring that bell so that's gonna wrap it up for this one just started raining now it's sunny again there's some more rain and clouds coming over there it's Costa Rica for you I suppose big thank you to our supporting channel members these guys are the reason I can make these videos without pitching VPNs children's craft sets and audiobooks so thank you thank you thank you uh, future improvements to this system will include uh, manually triggering the diversion heat so that I can use the first sun in the morning to heat our hot water before the batteries hit 100%. That way if we want to shower or wash dishes in the morning uh, we can have hot water right out of the gate. If that's the sort of stuff you're into that'll probably be a members only video just because it's a little bit fringe. Again hit that join button if that's the sort of stuff you're interested in. Uh, if not, that's cool too. We appreciate all of our viewers. If you want to see these ads, that's too bad. If you don't want to see these ads, 
consider checking them out within the first 24 hours. We usually don't enable monetization on our videos for 24 hours, so that's another good reason to ring that bell. If you check out our videos as soon as they come out, no boring ads. So thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.